Hi guys, welcome to the management and governance section of the course. So in this section, we're gonna cover some practice questions uh, which relate to services which fall in the management and governance category within the AWS Management Console. And that includes several different services. It includes things like AWS organizations, systems manager, performance monitoring tools like CloudWatch, auditing tools like CloudTrail, and tools which you can use for best practices configuration advice, such as Trusted Advisor. So there's definitely some elements of security and of technology. And as always, there's a bit of billing and pricing in there. You've got to know, you know what services cost what sort of money. So let's head over and start our first practice test for management and governance. So the first question asks, which AWS services can be used as infrastructure automation tools? And we've got to select two. So what can you use for automating infrastructure? Now, bear in mind the terminology here. Sometimes when we're talking about infrastructure, we're talking about the underlying hardware. But in other times, we're talking about things like VPCs. We're talking about things like route tables. We're talking about you know the EC2 instances you might deploy. So how can you deploy those resources and how can you automate the configuration of those resources? Well, the first answer here is CloudFormation. And I like that answer because as you know, CloudFormation is used for infrastructure automation. That's the terminology that AWS use. So you can use it for creating a template and through that template, you can deploy your infrastructure on AWS. And that includes things like EC2 databases. You can configure route tables and VPCs and lots of other resources. The next one is CloudFront. Is that an automation tool? Well, no, it's not. It's about performance for caching assets around the world like videos. What about Batch? Well, Batch is used for batch computing jobs on EC2. It's not an automation tool. Now, what about AWS OpsWorks? Well, OpsWorks is a service that it provides a managed implementation of the popular Chef and Puppet services. And those, those are actually used for configuration management. So they actually do do automation. So I like that answer there as well. So just to rule out the last answer here, what is Amazon QuickSight? Well, that's actually a business intelligence service. So it's not got anything to do with automation. So I'm happy with those and I'm gonna continue. So yep, absolutely, those are the correct answers. And there's a bit more information to help you understand both CloudFormation and OpsWorks, but I'm gonna take you to a diagram. So here, I just wanna show you a bit more information about CloudFormation. You don't need to know too much detail, but just to understand what it is. CloudFormation can deploy lots of different types of resources. It uses a template, so you're actually defining what you want to be built in a format like this. You can also see it visually. So, you know, this code on the left here might correspond to this actual implementation, which includes a database, it includes a security group and an elastic load balancer and a web server and so on. So that's what you can do with CloudFormation. And we often say that you deploy your infrastructure through code. So you deploy all this lot by writing this code. You've then got OpsWorks. So OpsWorks is the configuration management service that provides a managed implementation of Chef and Puppet. You can do stuff like updating your operating systems. You can patch, uh, you can do the same for your applications and you can do configuration and compliance management. So you as a developer submit changes to OpsWorks and it then implements those changes on a bunch of managed instances. So on to question two, which AWS service provides a quick and automated way to create and manage accounts? So how can you automatically create accounts? Now, obviously, you know, you can create multiple accounts on AWS, but we're looking for a way to automate that process here. So QuickSight came up a few minutes ago. and We know that's a business intelligence service. So that's not going to be it. Now, LightSail is like EC2, but it's a kind of cheaper version, has fewer features. It's a way that you can easily uh, create a something like a, a WordPress server, for instance. So that's not gonna be the right answer here. Now, what about AWS organizations? Well, AWS organizations does have an API and you can use that API to automatically create and manage AWS accounts. So I like that answer. Now, Amazon Connect is some kind of contact sensor. So whenever I see that one straight away, I kind of know that in the context of the cloud practitioner exam, it's very unlikely to be a correct answer. So organizations is the one that I'm going with. So that looks like the right answer. 
So moving on to question three, a cloud practitioner needs to rapidly deploy a popular IT solution and start using it immediately. What should the cloud practitioner use? So how can you quickly deploy a IT solution? And by popular IT solution, I'm thinking they're talking about something that's kind of well-defined. Uh, it's some kind of template that's, um, you know, some kind of application configuration that people can just keep reusing. So what would you use for that? Well, the well-architected framework documentation really gives you guidelines. So it's not going to help you to deploy it quickly. It will just help you to deploy it well. CloudFront is a content delivery network, so that doesn't make sense. And Elastic Beanstalk does help you to very quickly and easily deploy um, your code onto EC2 instances. But is that the same as rapidly deploying a popular IT solution? You know, there is a bit more involved. Now at the bottom here, we've got AWS Quick Start Reference Deployments. And I like that because that is definitely a way that you can deploy a bunch of pre-packaged configurations from templates. And that will be a way that anyone, even with a low amount of experience on AWS, can really easily deploy an application. So I'm going to go ahead with that answer. And that is the correct answer. And there's a link here to gather some more information if you want to look at what's available. And you can see here, there's a bunch of these kind of pre-packaged configurations that you can use to deploy this configuration.